Welcome to the Professor Knits podcast. My name is Nikki and I'm the Professor Who Knits. I'm also the Professor Knits on Instagram and I can be found on Ravelry as Sister Soldier. So thank you for tuning in if you're a first time viewer. I hope you enjoy what you see and if you do please uh, subscribe and give me a thumbs up. And if you're a returning viewer I really appreciate it. There are so many fantastic knitting podcasts out there. And if you're taking the time to watch mine, I very much appreciate it. There's only so many hours in the day and we can't uh, watch them all. But I do very much appreciate you tuning in. This is episode four of the Professor Knits podcast, which is a podcast primarily about knitting, uh, but also about spinning and dyeing yarn. So I think I'm just going to crack to it. I want this to be a fairly short video today. Uh, just to sort of wrap up the end of May. And I'm very excited because I have two finished objects uh, to show you. The first is my pair of socks, my Alexander Crafts pair of socks, knit with Alexander Crafts yarn, which is, uh, they're absurdly long. As for those of you who have watched me before, I knit these from a, a sock blank. And I just kept going and going so I could use up the whole sock blank and see all of the different gradiated colors. So they're a little bit absurdly long and I'm going to post a picture on how they look right here. Ding! As you can see I've been kind of working on my video editing skills so I hope it's going to work. Uh, and uh, it was done toe up two at a time magic loop which is my preferred method for socks. This is only my fourth pair of socks so I might change my mind, I don't know. Uh, but I did the sock matician um, formula for a basic vanilla sock in which he provides a mathematical formula, a very easy one, uh, to get the perfect fit. But he also provides this um, portion where you can adjust how tight or how loose you want your socks. And I overcompensated and made them a little too tight. Now they're okay on the foot. Once I get them on, and you can see I have the, the typical gusset hole. Oh well. Uh, and so they fit nicely except the the tube of the sock is a little tight on my calf. So I have to wear them slouchy even though I like the way they look pulled up. Uh, I think if I wore them like that all day I might lose some circulation to my feet. Um, so that's my first finished object. I enjoyed knitting from a sock blank. Uh, the next pair of socks, which I'll show you in the works in progress section, is not from a sock blank. I think I'm going to take a break from sock blanks, uh, but I did enjoy it. And uh, it, it's fun to know that you're going to end up, especially from a, a double knitted sock blank, with two identical socks, uh, which is always um, exciting. Not necessary, but exciting. So that was my first finished object for today. My second finished object is something I love so much. It is my Girl from the Grocery Store shawl from Hohi Locatelli, the designer. And I keep getting this wrong. I can't remember anymore if, if uh, the, the colorway, but this is, this is yarn dyed by Nicole from Hugh Loco, the tightly knit sister set for the grocery girls. And I can't remember if this was Jody or Tracy's colorway. I think it's Jody's, but I keep getting it. I keep forgetting. Um, on the glitz or sparkle or whatever the base is that has the Stellina. I loved knitting this. It was so quick and easy. The yarn was a dream to knit with. The colors are beautiful. And it didn't take me very long. Now here is the sad thing, is that I've decided to give it away, which breaks my heart because I love it so much. Um, but it needs to be given away, and I've already washed and blocked it, so I'm not going to handle it too much more. Uh, but the story behind uh, giving it away is this woman... Sorry, I need to fix my, my lights. Uh, you know how when, with prayer shawls, people will <clears throat> think about and meditate on uh, the person they're knitting it for, if the person's ill or needs help. It's this prayer shawl community. Uh, and you're, 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 you think about the person you're knitting it for to try to infuse it with positive energy and so on and so forth. Now I didn't do that uh, for this woman that I'm giving it to, but for some reason, like when I, when I started knitting the shawl, I was knitting it 
for myself. And most stuff I knit is for myself, let's be honest. And for some reason, I was thinking a lot about this woman named Pat. She is my mom's best friend and a beautiful person inside and out. And she's been just the, the, the most wonderful friend that um, my mom could have asked for. And they only became friends recently within the last five or six years. And uh, when I was knitting this, I brought it with me up to Canada. And for some reason, I was just thinking a lot about Pat. Um, I guess because my mom is going through a difficult time and Pat's really been there for her. And so I was knitting it, thinking a lot about Pat and not connecting the two. And then I saw her, we visited. And she mentioned to me how much she loved this poncho that I had knit for, my, for myself, of course, but I ended up giving it to my mom because it looked better on her. And I'll post a picture here. Ding! And uh, she was complimenting me on my knitting and how much she loved it and thought it was beautiful. And I looked at her and it dawned on me she's got silver eyes, right? And this is a silvery gray colorway in here. And I looked at her, I'm like, this, I've knit this shawl for Pat. That explains why I thought about her the whole time. Uh, the first thing we talked about that she mentioned when she saw me was how much she's been enjoying seeing my knitted projects that I give to my mom or to whomever. And I just thought, my goodness, I knit this for Pat and I didn't even realize it. And that must be why I've been thinking about her. And she also likes to wear a lot of cowls and scarves and accessories. And like I said, she's got these beautiful gray silver eyes, beautiful gray silvery hair. I think it's going to look quite stylish and chic on her. Um, so I've washed it, blocked it, wore it to take some pictures, which I'll post here and uh, put on my Ravelry page. Uh, and then I'm going to try to get it in the post this afternoon or maybe tomorrow morning because it's already getting to be late afternoon. And send it back up to Canada uh, for her. And I just thought it was interesting how I had thought about her while I knitted it. It was just so bizarre and I didn't quite know why I was thinking about her so much. And then it all came together as these things usually do. So I'm very sad to give it away. Uh, but also excited to, uh, because she's such a, a worthy a knit worthy person but this means I'm going to have to cast another one on ASAP and I'd like to get both of the sister the tightly knit sister sets both Jody and Tracy's colorway if Nicole from Hugh, Hugh Local plans on dyeing them up again anytime soon I'd like to snag both I mentioned Nicole from Hugh Loco, I think, in every podcast, and it's getting a little creepy stalker. I hope she doesn't think I'm a weirdo. I just, like I said, um, in, enjoy her yarns. So, yes, very beautiful. If you are an avid shawl knitter and haven't done this one yet, I highly suggest it. It's a very easy construction. So those are my two FOs, my two foes, uh, for today. So let's move along uh, to works in progress. Now, I've mentioned in previous podcasts my Jones cardigan that I'm knitting for my husband. It's still in hibernation, and I'm just going to leave it there until I'm ready. I'm not going to force myself to work on it, but I'm not going to forget about it, right? It's, it's, it weeps in the corner, like my guitar gently weeps, Jones cardigan gently weeps, or my spinning wheel has been gently weeping. I haven't spun it in about a week now. Uh, anyways, so I won't pull it out and talk about it because it's hibernating, um, but I will work on it. I will finish it. So the other uh, works in progress, I've got three uh, that are currently being worked on uh, right now. Uh, the first that I've had the longest work in progress is my Lush Cardigan by Tin Can Knits. Let me put it on here. It's not finished, but it's close. Uh, and I'll put the, the pattern up here and all I have left to do are the sleeves and of course the button band and the button. Now I don't know what, how the lighting is, if you can tell, but I'm knitting it in this gorgeous dark purple color. You can kind of see, there we go. Uh, gorgeous dark purple color. The yarn is from Shalimar 
the Breathless Decay yarn in the Byzantium colorway. And um, it's coming along really nice. It's a really enjoyable knit. There was the lace panel. Let me stand up a bit. The lace panel across the yoke, um, which didn't take much time. There's a few short rows finishing up the collar. Uh, and then doing the body with, there was some slight waist shaping, but really straightforward, quick stockinette stitch. Uh, and then the ribbing, and then I just have to do the sleeves. So I love it. Um, I think the color is coming through there. I would like to get this finished up in June. This will be my June. It won't take me very long. Um, now it's a little snug across the breasts, but I'm still nursing my daughter. Um, so there's a, quite a bit of fluctuation there, but I, I still knit it based on the size I know I'll return to. Um, fingers crossed. No, I, I'm, I'm fairly confident because they see they, they keep getting uh, smaller and smaller. Too much information? Oh well. Uh, so once uh, she's completely weaned, which I suspect will happen soon because she's now only nursing at night, um, uh, it'll fit a little bit better. And I didn't want to make the cardigan any bigger to compensate right now um, because then it'll be too big. Uh, once she's weaned. So if any of you were thinking, gee, it's kind of kind of tight across the chest, uh, I'm aware of it and, and it will be, it won't always be the case. Not that anybody cares, but I care. And this is my knitting podcast, so I'll talk about it. Uh, so anyways, I just really, really enjoy the, the yarn and the pattern uh, Lush by Tin Can Knits. My second work in progress is another shawl. I've noticed, I think this is my thing, I always have one garment, one shawl, and recently one pair of socks on the needles, because uh, I'm a, a recently new knock, so, sock knitter. Um, and that seems to be my thing, I always have one of those three things. And um, so anyways, that was my garment, my sweater. Uh, my shawl is another uh, Hohi Locatelli shawl. Uh, this one is the Ju Juji or Yuji, you, I don't know how to, how to pronounce it. And I do have a friend, colleague here in the anthropology department from <clears throat> Argentina. And I was asking her about the pronunciation of J's uh, in Argentina, because the Spanish there is Spanish, but some of the pronunciations and some of the vocabulary is different from, let's say, Mexico or Spain or, or other Spanish-speaking countries. And she... Um, she said, yes, of course, if, it, it, how you pronounce the J depends on the vowel that comes afterwards. So if it's O, it's ho, like ho hi locatelli. Um, if it's a different vowel, you might pronounce the J differently. So I'm not too sure. Sometimes it could be more of a J or a Y, um, but I don't know how to do it with the U. Uh, so anyways, I apologize if I'm, if I'm mispronouncing it. Um, but it's a beautiful construction. A lot of short rows, but they're not hard. I mean, I really like doing the wrap and turn in the short rows. I think it's just a simple uh, sort of technique that gives just an amazing result. Um, but there's this garter portion. Well, we start out with a garter portion. Uh, then we go on to, sorry, I didn't prepare this very well, did I? A garter proportion that goes on to a mesh back to a garter, then a mesh, and you, you keep changing colors. And it's just really, it, it looks complicated, but it's not. It's a very straightforward knit, if you don't mind doing short rows and wrapping and turning. So the colors I chose, or the yarn I chose, first of all, was by the Alpa Alpaca Yarn Company, uh, the Marikita line, line, and it's a hand-dyed yarn that's 50% baby alpaca, and 50% tensile. And I'm just getting very dry all of a sudden. Excuse me. <clears throat> and a fingering weight. And uh, the colors I chose are, well, this sort of beigey oatmeal-y color. Okay. And then the second color is this sort of greeny, coppery color. And this one uh, is called Potluck, 
the colorway is called potluck, but I think there was a, a, a mistake on the labels because they had also labeled this first color, this beige color, oatmeal beige color, potluck. So one of them is potluck, one isn't. I think this is the potluck and this is just beige. And then my third color that's going to be the sort of pop of detail color at the, at the end is this beautiful brown, which is called copper pot. Copper pot? So it's a wonderful yarn to work with. It's very soft and I had to switch needles. I was knitting them with just a, a regular Knit Picks Harmony, Harmony Wood interchangeable uh, needle that I have that I knit everything on. Um, but I found that the tips were a little too dull and I was splitting the yarn a lot and it's a very soft two ply yarn and the plies come apart very easily. So it's very easy to split the stitches and, and if you're not careful, you can end up with an extra stitch or it gets fuzzy, all that kind of stuff. And it was interfering with, with my enjoyment of knitting it. So I picked up a uh, pair of Haya Haya. They're not Haya Haya Sharps, but they're Haya Haya size four on a 40 inch needle and they're bamboo. see with their green cord um, but it's a nice tip it's it's sufficiently pointy that I don't I'm not splitting the yarn nearly as much it still sometimes happens um, but uh, it's it's nice it's a nice point it's definitely sharper than my other ones okay now what have I done but not too sharp uh, otherwise, I've been enjoying it. I mean, the, the, the woman knows how to design, I have to say. I haven't done any of her garments yet, but I do have them, uh, some of them on my queue in Ravelry, and, uh, but I just love it. My last work in progress is, of course, a pair of socks. Another toe-up, two-at-a-time magic loop. Uh, I am still learning how to knit socks, right? This is only my fourth or fifth, fourth pair of socks ever. And uh, so I'm, I'm still learning, you know, this, I finally figured out how to turn the heel without having the hole in the corner in the gusset, right? Uh, this is a basic vanilla sock um, using the traditional heel flap and gusset. Uh, this one's different from my April rainbow socks in that it has the reinforced heel where you're doing a slip purl stitch to add that extra layer um, of yarn to give that extra protection. I think I prefer that. I like having that extra that extra layer. Uh, yeah, and so it's kind of straightforward. I'm feeling pretty comfortable now with turning a heel. Um, so I think for my next sock project, because I'm trying to do a sock a month, but I just started in March. I didn't do January and February, so this is April. No, I'm sorry, this is May. Uh, these are my May socks. So I think for my June socks, I might try something different. Maybe a pattern in the sock, or maybe the fish, kip, fish kiss lips heel, or an afterthought heel, or something. I'm not too sure. I, I don't know what these things are yet, because uh, this is the only kind of heel I've ever done. So, um, yeah, I'll see. Now, the yarn is a merino... Uh, nylon blend, 75% merino, 25% nylon, that I dyed myself. Uh, here's the cake, kind of blew out. Uh, the yellow, purple, right, the two perfect colors together, in my opinion. I just love yellow and purple together. I mean, there's a reason. They're completely complementary. Um, so when I was playing around with some dyeing, um, I decided that I loved, I loved the yarn so much I was going to uh, immediately dry it and cast on a pair of socks for me. Um, I don't know, I've just seen a lot of yellow and purple flower combinations around town, uh, especially outside of our library, and I just have these two colors on my mind. Uh, it wasn't a, um, a submersed or immersed yarn, but rather hand-painted. 
Um, but if, if, if it looks like my toe box is big, it's because it is. I realized a little too late that I had too many stitches for my feet. And so I gradually decreased to the right size. Um, but like I said, I'm, I'm learning. It's all... I really do like knitting socks, though. And it's there's something very nice about knowing I dyed the yarn myself. And of course, I'm getting all tangled up. So yeah. Uh, vanilla sock, my May socks, and these should be a finished object the next time I podcast. All right. Well, this is a nice short video, and I, I think I'm going to end it there. Let's see. I had two finished objects, three work in progress, no spinning. Here's a sample of the dyeing I've been doing. I haven't been doing a whole lot of dyeing recently. Um, since we are doing this renovation um, right now. Uh, our kitchen is it's still usable but our ceiling has been torn down and we're replacing all the lighting and um, sometimes the electricity is not on depending on if my husband's wiring something or not. So I just haven't been able to get in there and, and do any more dyeing so I've just uh, been holding off on that. Uh, and knitting really is the only thing I've been able to do recently, just pick up and do a couple of rows each night, because spinning is a little bit more involved. So I think I'll let you all go. I hope you have a great last week of May, and I will be probably uploading my next video in the first week of June, and we'll hopefully have some three more finished objects for you, although I think that's kind of wishful thinking. Uh, so have a great day, have a great May, and uh, get your knit on. Take care.